Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builders. Supply this video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley. This is their part number FBB199. Four and a half by four and a half NH US 32D. This is a uh, it's a uh, it's a relatively common hinge. It's it's actually a very common hinge. The FBB199. The NH though makes it uh, uh, uncommon. Uh, and this that means no holes. So that's what a Stanley FBB199 looks like without the preparation, the countersinking done for the 1224 template machine screws. Okay, so where would this client use this? This client specifically is installing these hinges in an exterior gate application, and they are restricted on where, two things, they are restricted on where they can uh, have the fasteners located, so they literally drill these, plus they use a larger fastener than standard is the point um, of why this client orders these without holes. Um, they provide their own fasteners. They do, I, I'm pretty sure it's a quarter 20 uh, machine bolt that they use, which is a size larger than the standard, you know, 1224 stainless uh, screw that's going to be included. That's a thread forming flat undercut head 1224 Phillips drive machine screw. Um, so that's what this client uses these for. And about every year they order, you know, about 20 of these hinges. And that is their stock on an annual basis for the application when they're building this custom gate. That's what they use this for. And they like Stanley uh, because, well, because Stanley's a very good hinge. Uh, they also like Stanley because Stanley will make them without holes. Not every manufacturer will do that. And I've often thought to myself, um, is it that you cannot or is it that you will not make them without holes? Some people have told me that it's part of the manufacturing process to have holes in the material and I believe that's got something to do more with the finishing but I don't know. Stanley will make them without holes so here we are. So an FBB 199 that means a number of things. It means it is a ball bearing hinge. You can see there are four bearing packets. The 199 means that it is a uh, non-ferrous hinge. Okay, When it's the 32D or 630 finish that means solid stainless with a brushed finish. And it also means that it is a five knuckle hinge. Okay. You can see five knuckles. It also means it's a heavyweight hinge, which would be 180 thousandths on this hinge. And my caliper tells me 0.173, so a little shy on that. Uh, I would expect that to be closer to 177 or 182, but 173 is what my caliper says. Um, means it's a full mortise hinge as well. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here that this hinge is meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. You'll have that standard gap when the leaves are brought parallel. This client's not mortising this, they're surface mounting it, but it suits the uh, condition that they're working on. Uh, speaking of mortise, um, sometimes what will happen is someone will, in a gate application uh, or some sort of a channel frame application, I had a client uh, years ago and their trick was they would surface mount the hinge to the to the rabbit of the frame because they couldn't prep that in the field but they could take that wood door and they could double mortise the wood door so they literally mortised it you know double the thickness of the leaf required they would have had to have you know probably not done anything else at that point uh, because they would have want some margin between the edge of the door and uh, the jam so double mortising the leaf thickness would still uh, leave you with um, enough, you know, the typical 332nd or an eighth of an inch between the edge of the door and the hinge jam. Um, you know, obviously if you were to do that, you'd expose a small amount of that leaf, but, you know, that's the way that the client did the work. So uh, that covers the FBB 199. Um, and now the size, four and a half by four and a half. That means that this is a four and a half inch tall hinge and that it's four and a half inch wide. The height is the first dimension on hinges like this. So be mindful. The height is what we're going to call out first. You don't want to, you know, think uh, that hinges run the same sizing uh, convention that doors are. Doors are width first and then height. Well, hinges are opposite. And I imagine that's just because of the 
possible uh, initial importance or, or tiered importance of the two values. If you told me the door is seven foot, okay, great, it's good to know. Yeah, obviously I have to know it's seven foot. Tell me the width first. When it comes to a hinge, yeah, we'd like to know the height first. Um, and then the second dimension is a bit um, subservient, I think, to the, to the height. So this is a four and a half inch hinge, very typical, very common. The width may or may not suit the client's requirements. It may not be the best option because I, I haven't seen a cross section of the gate. What I mean is how thick is the gate? Where is the vertical axis of pivoting in relationship to the center of the thickness of the gate? They might be well better served by having a four and a half by four or maybe a four and a half by five. I don't know, but that's what the client uses. You want that, and the reason I say is you want that projecting hardware tucked back as close to the face of the door and frame as possible. You don't want hardware hanging off your opening. And very common, you will see four and a half by four and a half used everywhere. Not very common. It's this common standard size. That does not mean it's the best size. Um, it is, uh, it was said to me once, you know, I've, I've heard it said by a uh, representative of a hinge manufacturer that they only make four and a half, four and a half because all the distributors demand it when four and a half by four might be a better option. In any instance where you have a frame that wraps the wall um, and uh, there's no projecting trim or some sort of wall condition, a four and a half by four and a half is not the best hinge. So a four and a half by four would be a better, would be the proper uh, best practice type of option. Uh, so that talks about the size of this hinge. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the size in a moment. They have finished both sides, the back side as well. Okay, not every manufacturer will treat the back size of the side of their hinge as they did the front. I can't tell you that that is standard practice for Stanley. Uh, it might be on a no hole, a no hole hinge, um, you know. But nonetheless, I'm pointing out to you that the back side of the hinge is brushed finished as well. Okay. This is a heavyweight hinge, which means it's going to be that 180 thousandths uh, nominally. Uh, that is typical when you're hanging something that's just heavier, heavier or higher volume. You know, if you had a 3068, a 3070 metal door and it was 18 gauge, standard hinges. But if you go to 16 gauge, yeah, I think a heavyweight would be a better option. You go to wider than three foot, you should be going to five inch tall. Um, very likely, you know, heavyweight if you get out, you know, that far. Uh, you know, maybe do a four foot 16 gauge door, I'd be doing five inch and heavy white. Depends on the volume of use as well. Uh, you know, you don't want the hinge to succumb prematurely to just standard wear and tear. So the hinge needs to be up to the task. Let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look. Uh, the rest of the part number though is TMS. Uh, that stands for template machine screws. That would be the proper nomenclature when you want machine screws. And then 630 is the brushed is the solid stainless with a brushed finish, which happens to be the most durable of all finishes. It's called a natural finish. All we've done is take taken that base material and cleaned it up with a very light brush wire wheel situation. Let's switch to the screen view and take a look at the supporting documentation. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at here, and there is a link below this video to the cut sheet, uh, which is here, showing us the FBB 199 and the sist and its sister products is actually this one here that we're looking at. Heavyweight 168 is a heavyweight made of steel. The 199 can be also made of brass or bronze. When you have a brass or bronze finish, it will still be a 199, but you can do a 199 in solid stainless that's polished or solid stainless that is brushed finish. For use on heavy doors where high frequency is expected, entrance doors to buildings, etc. All hinges have template screw hole location for use on either wood or hollow metal doors and frames, except of course our hinge, which is the NH. Equipped with four Stanley permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings. The pin in our hinge is made of stainless steel. There's a hole in the bottom tip for easy pin removal. That's true, there's a hole down here and we have an image uh, associated with the item that will show you that. Should you want to drive the pin out, that's where you would access that. Um, and it's very likely that you will drive the pin out to hang your door, or in this case, the gate. 
Removable flush tips and pins, yes, you can turn those over if you needed to. They're, I don't see a reason to turn them over. The hinge can be installed exactly the way it is. You can do a raised barrel hinge, electric wire or uh, switch, through wire or switch, hospital tip, decorative tip, security stud, non-removable pins. So raised barrel is a type of hinge where you would... Um, you will you will see instances for raised barrel hinges. Okay, you have a frame and you have a door. Okay, a standard hinge is going to work. What very often happens, however, is there is when you need a raised barrel hinge you actually have a frame that might have an extension added to it. But the door is still residing in this space. Now we've got to swing it this way. I'm sorry, I put that arrow in the wrong direction. I apologize. Um, what happens when you have an extension on the jam or the inset from the face of the frame to the face of the door is greater than standard, they'll take an otherwise standard hinge Okay, they'll take this otherwise standard hinge and they will put a bend on the hinge leaf such that the barrel is literally shifted in that direction. So it's raised. You imagine that here, bend, bend, okay? That's because you can't get that barrel of the hinge into this space okay that's a raised barrel hinge very common not very common but you will see them if you are if you keep your eyes out in the world you'll see raised barrel hinges electric wire just means it's power transfer it'll allow you to bring low voltage uh, through the hinge common configurations of that would be four well i mean four six eight ten twelve wire but four wire is by far the most common because you really need to just you know, have a pair of wires going through, but you would never get a two-wire hinge because there will always be a, a spare set of wires. Um, you can do switches, which means there might be the option to have an integrated door position switch in the hinge, which there would be if you want to know the condition of that door as it relates to the hinge position. They can do a switch. Hospital tips are interesting in the sense that it is the type of hinge that you have your you have your hinge got your barrel okay you get the concept if i took this and i ground all that off so that literally you know my well actually it would be Awful drawing, I'm sorry. Your hinge barrel. Where we took that and ground that down, that would prevent someone from hanging something on this. It'd be considered ligature resistant. Decorative tips, that'd be urn tip, steeple tip, ball tip. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the standard is not considered decorative, but we would call it a button tip. It looks like the button on your coat. Um, other manufacturers have other types of decorative tips. Stanley does not necessarily have, I don't think they have an urn tip, but they'd have a steeple and a ball for sure. Security studs and non-removable pins are references to security features on a hinge. A security, a non-removable pin is where they drill and tap a hole in the barrel and insert a set screw, which will reside within a groove cut in the pin itself so that when you tighten the set screw, you can't drive the pin out. Whoopsie. Um, which will severely uh, prevent someone from removing that pin. You can also do a security stud where there, where there would be a circular object about the size of a nickel, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit bigger than a dime, about a quarter inch thick that will reside here. And then there'll be a hole in the other leaf 
so that when you close the two leaves, you can't separate the door even if you drove the pin out. You will very common, commonly see a security stud and non-removable used on the same hinge. I see that in, in airports is where I see that type of security measure. The size is available in an FBB 199. You'll take note, 4.5 by 4.5 is the smallest. They'll go up to 8 by 8 as well. Apparently in a FBB 168 only will they do these larger sizes. Okay, so lots of size options. Again, the height is the first dimension. It's too bad they don't have a four and a half by four. That to me ought to be very much ought to be on this list, very much. Um, size of screws that are included, thickness of the leaf as well. Now, there is a link here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Stanley products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. The one that I like to use is quite old, quite dated. I'm just quite familiar with it. So the 2010 architectural hardware catalog uh, is going to give you everything you needed to know pretty much about hinges. And if you deal in our industry, or if you work with hinges, just more than quite occasionally, I would definitely suggest that you take a tour through here and familiarize yourself with the different types of hinges, the different terminology, sizes, base materials, formulas for determining the, determining the width of a hinge. And this is, in essence, what I was referring to earlier. How wide of a hinge do you actually need? And this would be the formula. Door thickness minus back set times two, plus your clearance, plus your inset would determine that. I would think if this client ran this formula that they didn't need four and a half wide. They might need, like I said, four or maybe five different fasteners that are available, etc. An encyclopedic reference is really what this is. That's that security stud we were just talking about. Yeah, I'd say closer to a dime, I suppose. And there's our NRP right there. Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. Now let's take a look and see what else is in this box, this package. Um, Stanley has taken habit to putting tape on the outside of the boxes. I imagine it's become it's because it's coming from overseas. I would prefer if they did not do that. Um, you know, they're putting the tape on before the label goes on. I, I don't know. Um, now, what else is in the box? Stanley, as a rule, will send uh, cardboard shims. Cardboard shims are just, they, they serve two purposes. They allow the hinges to be isolated from each other. So when they package the hinges, the hinges aren't touching each other. But the shims are also perforated cardboard that will allow you to literally shim the door, move it around, cant the door in and out tip it, move it, you know, that sort of thing. Obviously not for use on fire rated applications because uh, cardboard shims are not permissible for use on fire rated doors. You can shim the door, but you have to use a shim made of steel. The screw package is also included. Regarding the screws, uh, definitely do not assume that the factory knows what screw you want. Even in the instance when you s state specifically what you want, <laughs> Um, clarify it in all instances. These hinges, when we ordered them no holes, I also specified TMS, template machine screws, which is the industry standard nomenclature for, I want machine screws that are going to go, I want machine screws. They're template machine screws because it's going down onto a piece of, it's going to be attached to a piece of material that's been properly prepped for it. It's a machine screw going down onto a templated application rather than just a machine screw that you might be drilling and tapping into the face of something where there's no prep, but a hinge would require a template machine screw, a TMS. Um, these screws, these hinge, this hinge order, and there's 20 of them total, came in without the screws, and um, you know the factory obviously saw no hole, did not understand what TMS meant, I'm thinking, and just shipped them. You know, who, you know why would you need screws if you, there are no holes for screws, uh, you know, well, sure, we might be drilling and plug welding this. That's possible. I could drill holes into this, uh, into what I'm going down into, and I could plug weld that with my welder. 
Uh, I could grind that all smooth. I could sand it all smooth, and it would be beautiful. Uh, you could also just simply weld around the perimeter, I suppose, if you wanted to. That's not what this client's doing, and that's why we specified template machine screws. Um, so there's a bit of a delay, but nonetheless, um, all is well that ends well. So that's what's in the package. Um, there are three in a box. They're not priced per pair and a half. They're priced per hinge. This client ordered 20, and you'll note that's not a multiple of three. So they're priced per hinge. Uh, there is a lead time on these. These are made to order, and this order took about three weeks to come in. So be mindful. If you need a custom hinge, do allow the proper lead time. Any questions on the FBB199, 4.5, NH, uh, TMS, 630 by Stanley, or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.